My whole life I've always wanted to join the ambulance service. It's something I've always been passionate about. I started around four years ago as a volunteer and now I work for them full time. Although I love my job, it's really important that we remember that behind the uniform and the big ambulance and the headset that we're actually just humans trying to make the world a little bit of a better place and trying to make the difference. The things we see and hear every single day, some people don't experience in a lifetime. I never really thought that I would be someone to suffer with mental health because the person I'm known as is a really che cheery, happy person and he doesn't really have bad days. I guess my mental health started to deteriorate in 2019 when I went through a tough breakup and unfortunately I carried on putting on a front as if I was okay. I guess you could say that I saw it as a weakness. Social media played a really big part in my mental health and how it affected me personally. I started to receive nasty comments and hate comments in not only social media but in real life and I guess you could say I really struggled with them because they make you feel really worthless and undervalued and you start to question everything and that's when you become unwell. Hate comments became so often and I struggled to leave the house and I struggled to post on social media because I was so scared of what people thought of me and what they were saying about me. I even struggled to go to work in case someone was talking about me and that's when I started suffering from anxiety and when I started to have palpitations and headaches and sickness so bad that actually I would physically vomit, I let these comments get the better of me. I needed to put the front on because that's who I was, I was this happy person. The person I am doesn't suffer from anxiety. Suffering from mental health is hard enough, but it's even more challenging when we lose one of our own. I lost a very good friend of mine, not only a friend but a colleague. Unfortunately, his brother called me whilst I was on a training course and said to me, I'm really sorry but they've found Luke's car. That's when, that's when it just was too much, it was too much and I felt physically sick but I felt like I'd let him down and I felt like I should have done more and that's probably something that we all feel when something like that happens. I took a day off to have some time to myself but not enough. The day after that I went straight back to work and I didn't allow time for myself and the day after I came back to work that's when, that's when I took the call that really took things to the next level for me. Ambulance emergency, is the patient breathing? <laughs> I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna jump. Okay sir, I'm organising that help for you now. Stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do next, okay? After that call, that's, that's when I hit rock bottom and I kept up this front but I couldn't keep up the front any longer and that's when I decided that suicide was the only way. If it wasn't for one of my good friends, I wouldn't be here today. And although I was very angry at her at the time, I know she did the right thing by taking the noose from my neck and stopping me from, from continuing with what I thought at the time was the right thing. My name is Ben Hawkins and I'm an emergency dispatcher for the East of England Ambulance Service and I am suffering with mental health. Now I'm not quite there yet but I've been receiving help for 10 months and I'm going to get there but what's really important is that we do talk about mental health. It's not embarrassing and it doesn't make me weak, it actually makes me stronger because I can talk about it. So please, if you're suffering, please get some help.